Hello and welcome back to another video. In this problem, we're asked to prove the statement using the precise definition of a limit. We have the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared plus 2x minus 7 is equal to 1. So the precise definition of a limit states that the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals l. If, for any epsilon greater than 0 that you could pick, any positive number, there is an associated positive number such that 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus a is less than delta. If this is true, then the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So for this particular example, let's plug in our values. So a is the value that x is approaching, so that's x minus 2 less than delta greater than 0. If we're saying that the absolute value of x minus 2 is greater than 0, this is the same as saying x minus 2 is not equal to 0 because the only other numbers that we're excluding are negative numbers, right? By saying it's greater than zero, we're excluding zero and the negative numbers, but we already know it's not negative because it's an absolute value, so we're only excluding x being equal to two. We're looking at the limit as x approaches two, therefore we can ignore this and simply say that the absolute value of x minus two is less than delta. Here, f of x is the function that we have plugged in here, x squared plus two x minus seven. L is the value of the function, so minus 1, this is less than epsilon. x squared plus 2x minus 8 is less than epsilon, or the absolute value of it, rather. Factoring this, we get x plus 4 times x minus 2. And therefore, the absolute value of x plus 4 times the absolute value of x minus 2. I'll rewrite that to be more clear. The absolute value of x plus 4 times the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than epsilon. Now, we want to have x minus 2 is less than um, delta, and x minus 2 is less than epsilon with some function attached to it. However, if we were to just divide by x plus 4, then we have x's on both sides, and we don't want to do that. So then we're going to say, okay, we have the ability to pick a value c, right? We're going to say that this c is greater than 0, um, so just a positive c such that um, x plus 4 the absolute value of x plus 4 is less than c. We pick this particular c because if we multiply both sides by x minus 2, we can say that the absolute value of x minus 2 times x plus 4 is less than c times the absolute value of x minus 2. And we can therefore say that c times the absolute value of x minus 2 right here is less than epsilon by saying that the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than epsilon over c. All right, so this is just a c that we've picked that um, follows this, um, these equations or these inequalities. And therefore, we can say that the x minus 2 is less than delta, it's less than epsilon over c, therefore delta equals epsilon over c. However, uh, we don't know what c is, so this isn't super helpful um, because we want delta in terms of epsilon uh, concretely without an extra variable in there. So what we have to do is, okay, let's say we pick a particular delta, right? Let's say delta is equal to one, right? And so that means that the absolute value of x minus two is less than one. And we have to turn this into something that applies to c. So if we say x minus two, its absolute value is less than one. That means it's less than one and greater than negative one. If we add 6 to both sides, or rather all sides, we get x minus 2 plus 6 is plus 4. 1 plus 6 is 7. 6 minus 1 is 5. Therefore, x plus 4 is um, less than 7 and greater than 5. Um, therefore, we can say that the absolute value of x plus 4 is less than 7. Right? The absolute value of all these numbers in this range is less than 7. Therefore, if c is greater than x plus 4, and 7 is greater than x plus 4, then 7 is a valid value of c. So we can say that c equals 7, and therefore delta equals epsilon over c, it equals epsilon over 7. However, this is based off of the fact that we plugged in a value of 1. So we now have two um, restrictions here. We can say that um, delta equals 1 and delta equals epsilon over 7. And we have to pick the more restrictive value here. 
um, and since we don't know what epsilon is, then what we can say is that delta actually equals the minimum of these two values, right? Where if you picked one, one over seven would be the more restrictive value. So for that particular epsilon, delta is one over seven. If you picked 70, then epsilon over seven is, 70 over seven is 10, then your um, delta is one. So that's how we put this. And since we have a relationship between epsilon and delta, we can say that this is a um, proven limit.